Here we see a bipolar junction transistor, or BJT for short. As you notice, this transistor is a three-layer device. Depending on how the semiconductor materials were formed, the bipolar junction transistor may be either an NPN or a PNP type device. In either case, there will be three leads attached to the device. One will be the emitter, one will be the base, and one will be the collector. The emitter lead is easily identified by the arrow placed on it. As you notice, the arrow points in on the PNP and it points out on the NPN transistor. The base section of the transistor is very narrow and is very lightly doped. The emitter and collector sections, on the other hand, are doped very heavily. This causes the depletion regions between the emitter base and the collector base to penetrate very deep into the base section of the transistor. Since the base section is lightly doped, there will be fewer majority charge carriers available to recombine with the charge carriers coming from the emitter section. As a result, about 95% of the emitter's charge carriers will pass through the base section and flow into the collector of the device. Transistors are considered current amplifying devices. This is due to the fact that a small base current can control a much larger collector current. When the transistor is biased properly, the emitter base section will be forward biased. This causes the emitter base junction to have a much narrower depletion region. The collector base junction, on the other hand, will become reverse biased, which will widen its depletion region. Since the base section is lightly doped and the collector section is heavily doped, the collector base depletion region will extend deep into the base area. When the majority charge carriers from the emitter flow into the narrow base section, they become minority charge carriers. The reverse bias junction between the collector and base will enhance the flow of these minority carriers. The reverse bias then carries the minority carriers into the collector section. Since the transistor is a three-terminal device, one of the terminals must be connected so it is common to both the input and the output of the device. Therefore, the bipolar junction transistor may be connected in a circuit in one of three ways. It may be connected in a common emitter configuration, a common collector configuration, or as a common base configuration. Each of these configurations will have its own circuit characteristics. The common emitter will have a typical input impedance of 1500 ohms. The output impedance will usually be around 1 mega ohm. The voltage gain will generally be about 330 with a current gain of 50. This gives the common emitter a power gain of 16,500. You will also notice that the circuit inverts the phase of the incoming signal by 180 degrees. The common emitter is the most widely used of the three configurations. The common collector, which is also referred to as an emitter follower circuit, has a typical input impedance of approximately 52,000 ohms. The output impedance of this circuit is usually very low, somewhere around 80 ohms. The common collector also provides a current gain of about 50 and a power gain of about 50. However, this circuit provides no voltage gain. The common collector is generally used as a buffer amplifier. You may also have noticed that this circuit does not invert the incoming signal. The common base circuit, on the other hand, will have a typical voltage gain of 327 and a current gain of less than 1. This gives the common base a power gain of approximately 320. The input impedance of this circuit is about 30 ohms and the output impedance will be about 1 mega ohm. The common base is normally used for very high frequency voltage amplification situations. Here we see the junction field effect transistor. You will often hear this device being referred to as simply a JFET. The junction field effect transistor is constructed of a bar section of one type of semiconductor material sandwiched between two sections of the other type of material. As you may have noticed, the JFET is also a three terminal device. It has a gate, drain, and source lead. The junction field effect transistor is a voltage operated device. The JFET transistor requires virtually no input current. This gives it an extremely high input impedance. There are two types of JFET devices, N-channel and P-channel. 
The bar of semiconductor material placed between gates of the device is referred to as the channel. The ends of the channel are designated as the drain and source. The channel of the transistor is more lightly doped than is the gate sections. This causes the depletion region to penetrate deep into the channel when the device is reverse biased. Since the depletion region is depleted of majority charge carriers, it behaves as an insulator. When the reverse bias is increased, the channel through which the charge carriers flow is made more narrow. This results in an increase of the effective resistance of the JFET device. When the reverse bias is increased sufficiently, the depletion region meets at the center of the channel and cuts off the current flow through the device. This is referred to as the pinch-off region. The gate channel junctions are almost never forward biased. The name field effect comes from the fact that the depletion regions in the channel are the result of the electrostatic field caused by the reverse bias gate channel junctions. If a bias voltage is not applied to the gate of the device, the current will flow through the transistor as if it were flowing through a resistor. When the gate of the junction field effect transistor is reverse biased, the only current which will flow into the gate sections is the reverse current flow which consists of the minority charge carriers. Therefore, the gates of the JFET will draw virtually no current. Amplification of the JFET is made possible by increasing or decreasing the gate voltage. The corresponding drain current will vary accordingly to produce an amplified reproduction of the input signal being applied at the gate of the device. Unlike the bipolar junction transistor, the JFET must be biased to stop the current flow through the device. In this respect, the junction field effect transistor operates much like a vacuum tube. Here we see a MOSFET device. MOSFET stands for Metal Oxide Semiconductor Field Effect Transistor. There are many types of MOSFET devices. Here we see another type of MOSFET device. As you may have noticed, this device has an insulated material placed between the gates and the channel material. This device is commonly referred to as an insulated gate metal oxide semiconductor field effect transistor. Let's examine how the MOSFET device is constructed. To construct a MOSFET device, you must start with a P-type or N-type intrinsic material. Next, two blocks of heavily doped semiconductor material are diffused into the solid block. Then the surface is coated with a layer of silicon oxide. There are two holes left in the oxide layer to make contact with the heavily doped semiconductor blocks. If we were using an N-type semiconductor material, then the heavily doped blocks would be P-type. Or if we were using P-type semiconductor material, the blocks would be N-type material. Next, metal is deposited through the holes to form the drain and source terminals. Then a metal plate is deposited on the silicon oxide between the drain and source terminals. This plate will become the gate of the MOSFET. The silicon oxide is being used as an insulator. Since the gate is placed on the silicon oxide, the gate will become insulated from the channel of the MOSFET. In our example, we used a P-type substrate with N-type blocks. If the drain is made positive with respect to the source and no bias is applied to the gate, there will be very little current flowing between these two points. This will be due to the fact that the MOSFET will be in a forward and reverse bias condition. Therefore, the only current flow will be from minority charge carriers. When the gate terminal is made positive with respect to the source terminal, negative charge carriers will be induced into the channel between the drain and source. As the positive bias on the gate is increased, more negative charge carriers will be induced into the channel. These induced charge carriers will actually be minority charge carriers within the semiconductor material. These charge carriers will be attracted to the positive voltage being applied to the gate terminal and will form a channel across the surface of the insulated material beneath the gate plate. The higher the bias voltage applied to the gate, the wider this channel of minority charge carriers will become. Since the conductivity of the channel is enhanced by the positive bias being applied to the gate of the device, this type of semiconductor is known as an enhancement mode MOSFET. Because the gate is insulated from the channel, there will be virtually no current flow between the substrate channel and the gate. This gives the insulated gate MOSFET a very high input impedance.
Next, we shall look at the depletion mode insulated gate MOSFET. As you can see, it is very similar to the enhancement mode MOSFET. The primary difference being that this device has a lightly doped channel placed between the two heavily doped source and drain blocks. You should also have noticed that this channel is made of the same type of material as is used to form the source and drain blocks. If the drain is made positive with respect to the source and no bias is applied to the gate, a current will flow through the channel. Now suppose we make the gate negative with respect to the P material. We see that the positive charge carriers will be induced into the lightly doped channel that was placed between the source and drain. These positive charge carriers will absorb the negative charge carriers in the end channel and cause the channel's resistance to increase. You may also have noticed that the charge carriers were pushed toward the bottom of the channel. If the negative bias on the gate is sufficiently increased, it will cause the channel to stop the current flow between the source and drain. The gate is then said to have depleted the charge carriers from the channel. Now suppose we make the gate positive with respect to the P material. This causes the charge carriers to become induced into the channel. This will decrease the resistance of the channel and allow more current to flow between the source and drain terminals. As you can see, this device can be operated either in the depletion or enhancement mode of operation.